Welcome back, everybody. This is our Algebra 2 Exercise Functions Lesson Number 8, Introduction to Logs, Home Review, Part 3. And if you have not gone chance to, please check out Part 1 and 2, where we go over our, I guess, our intro to how to convert an exponential function to a log function and log function exponential, which will help us solve a number of these problems. And so with number 7, Determine the value of each of the following logs with each of these will have non-integer fractional answers. And so we will begin with setting each of these equal to n, making them x uh, log equations. And just as we did before, we set up our template of log base b of x equals to y being equal to b raised to y equals x. And we do this so that we can match and rewrite each of these in exponential form. So we see here the base would be 4 to the nth power is equal to 2. And so if we can, which we hope to, we want to rewrite them so that they have the same base. And so we'll write 4 as 2 squared. So we have 2 squared raise the n equals to 2, or in this case, 2 to the 2n equals 2 to the first. And when we have an exponential equation like this, where the bases are equal to each other, the exponents must equal each other as well. So for a, our equation would be 2n equals 1, or n equals 2 1 half, because we divide both sides by 2. That's 7a. For 7b, again, we do the same thing. We rewrite this as an exponential equation. The base is 4. The exponent is n, and our answer is 8. And again, we want to rewrite the, the two sides to have the same base. Not 4, though, because writing 8 as base 4, a little difficult. But if we write them as base 2, and we saw on the left side array that, the, that in this case, uh, 4 to the n is the same as 2 squared to the n. Well, 8 is 2 to the third, which gives us 2 to the 2n equals 2 to the third, or 2n equals 3. And we divide both sides by 2. So for 7b, the value n is 3 over 2. Now, you're probably saying, what does that mean? Well, it means that log base 4 of 8 also equals 3 over 2. For c, we can continue. We have 5 to the n equals the cube root of 5. Now, cube root of 5, we're going to use our, our knowledge of fractional exponents and radicals. We remember in this case that the cube root of 5 is really the radicands of the base, 5, raised to the one-third power, where the index is going to be the denominator of the exponent. And so for 7c, n is equal to one-third. So that would mean that, again, this log base 5 of q root of 5 is really one-third. Now, just set this to 3 over 2, and I'll set this equal to one-half. So these are the answers for the logs. So now we're just find n. n represents the log value. Now for d. 2 to the n equals the, the fifth root of 4. Now, again, we rewrite this in a exponential form. The radical becomes 4 to the 1 fifth power, because the index is 5. It becomes the denominator of the exponent. And the 4 we rewrite as uh, base 2. So this 2 to the n becomes 2 squared raised to the 1 fifth. And when you raise the power to another power, we multiply exponents. So we get 2 to the n equals 2 to the, well, 2 times 1 fifth is 2 fifths. Now that they have the same base, the exponents are equal to each other, which means n equals 2 over 5. And so that is the answer for d. Between what two consecutive integers must the value of log four, seven, four, base 4 of 7,342 lie? 
It's a justify your answer. So again, we're going to rewrite this log base 4 of 7342 equal to n. And so here, again, we rewrite this as 4 to the n equals 7342. At this point, we're doing this so many times of converting a log equation to an exponential equation, we should be able to figure out the base, the exponent answer. And so now we're going to say, well, what power are we going to raise 4 to? Now, here we do a little guess and check. So let's take a look. Our number is 7,342. So let's take, let's raise 4 and raise it to, let's see now, is it 10th power enough to get, to get 7,000? Oh, whoa, 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 10 power is way too much. Well, let's dial it back a bit then. Let's take it 4 to the 6th power. Okay, so for the 6th power, definitely less than 7,000. Let's take 4 to the 7th power. Oh, so in this case, for the 6th power, it is going to be 4,096, 4, and for the 7th power is 16,384. Let's write that down. So for the 6th power is 4,096. And for the seventh power, I believe it was 16,000, what was that again? 16,384. Sorry, I popped it in and out, just to make sure. Yes, for the six, 4,096. For the seven, 16,384. And so this number of 7,342 fits right in between. Therefore, the two integers, so let's type this out, So, because my handwriting is dreadful. Make sure the font's not so big. So the two, the two, the two, two consecutive integers that the, the log lies between are six and seven okay and again it is because of this because n will represent the log value right so the re by rewriting this log into the exponential equation we plug in values for the n to determine the value of uh, what we get so <clears throat> in this case if it was if for the six would give us 4096 too little for the seven to give us 6384 which is way too much so that's so we see in this case between the exponents and the exponents very much want to keep in mind that these correspond to the exponent here that really a logarithm is an exponent for a base okay and that's why in this case it seems like the value of the log seems so small but it's really the power of the exponent for that base null it's a very powerful thing question number nine between what two consecutive integers must the value of log base 5 of 1 over 500 lie? So again, very much like we did before, we're going to rewrite this as log base 5 of 1 over 500. And we'll set that equal to the, uh, the, the unknown value n. We don't know the exact value. But we will write, we write this as 5 to the n is equal to 1 over 500. Which 1 over 500 is the same as 2 over 1,000. So 5 to the n is equal to the same thing as 0 0.002. So decimal-wise, that's what we're looking for. Okay, and we definitely know that five is five to the over zero is equal to one, so it has to be less than one. It's probably a negative number. Okay, we know that five to the negative one equals one fifth, which is equal to 0.2, and five to the negative two that's equal to one over 25, which is equal to, I believe, 0.04. Okay, now 5 to the negative 3, not off the top of my head. I know it's 1 over 125. I think 1 over 125, is that 0 0.008? Let's double check. Let's take 5 raised to the negative 3. 
can we find 0 0.008 okay and so 5 to the negative 4 oops that's 5 to the positive 4 <laughs> excuse me I forgot to hit that negative 5 to the negative 4 there you go enter 0 0.0016 okay so we know 5 to the negative 3 is 0 0.008 Point zero, point zero zero eight, and five to the negative four, which is one over six twenty-five. To so go to point zero zero one six. Now, just to make sure, because I think that's what it was. Let's double check. Yep. Okay. So, in this case, between point zero zero eight, which is equal to five to the negative three, and 5, negative 4, which is 0 0.0016. Hmm. Well, I definitely think in this case that 0 0.008 is greater than 0 0.002. Right? Because this eight over a this eight over a thousand. This is only two over a thousand. And but here we have 16 over 10,000, or really if we had looked at the same decimals, it would be the same thing as um, as the same unit wise. Take this a zero at the end here and the zero at the end here. So the, if you want to, you can make it so that they have the same decimal places. You can kind of compare them. And so this 20 definitely goes between uh, 16 and 80. Therefore, the two consecutive integers, the two consecutive integers that the log falls between, lies between, are negative 3 and negative 4. Okay? Because we evaluate them at, the, at those uh, at those exponents. Okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's here I'm going to uh, end our our home review part three for our introduction to logs. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Uh, if, if you found it helpful, please give this video a like. And if you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel and turn on, turn on notifications for when new videos are added to the channel. All right, so I look forward to seeing you in the next video. We have a couple more questions left over. So see you in part four. Thank you so much. Take care and be safe.